Hello, today we'll learn to use Integrant to create a framework for our application, then unlock the power of the reloaded workflow. Let's get into it. Integrant is a micro framework for building applications with data-driven architecture. We can usually model our web applications as a composition of individual components that has life cycle and dependencies on each other. For example, we can model our application as three components. One, the server, which listens to HTTP requests. Two, the handler, which turns request maps into response maps. Three, the database, which manages the database connections. The dependencies are clear. The server depends on the handler. The handler depends on the database. The life cycle of server and database both require releasing the re resources before throwing the reference away. Also, we are going to use Integrant REPL to implement our own reloaded workflow. So the first thing is we want to uh, include Integrant and Integrant REPL into our dependencies. We start our REPL and uh, go to, uh, create a new file that's name it uh, system and include the dependencies. To recap, there are two reasons why we are using Integrant. The first is we use Integrant to model the dependency relationship between each component. And the second reason is we use Integrant to help us manage the lifecycle method of each component. So we start with a system map that shows the relationship between each component. And just for example, let's uh, try a, a system that has three components. Component A, uh, which depends on the component B. And component B depends on the component C. And component C doesn't have any configuration. And note that here I'm using namespace keywords to keep things organized. To define the uh, lifecycle functions, uh, Integrant uses multi-method to do it. This method, uh, this multi-method is on the Integrant init key, dispatched by the keyword in the system map. The argument is the entry on that system map. So the first argument will always be the A, and the second argument will be this map. So, and here that we are initializing, uh, perhaps returning A. So same thing for, uh, for B and C. And for the teardown, we use uh, another multi-method And notice the ex exclamation mark at the at the at the method hold key because this one is pure side effect. It doesn't return anything. So we want to capture the the system the running system uh, in uh, in the var uh, to initialize it. We uh, send the system configuration to the uh, integrand init function, and let's run the function. Integrant understands the relationship between A, B, and C. So the very first thing got initialized is C, which doesn't have any dependencies, and then initialize B and then A. So once the system is running, you can uh, inspect that. The system key C has the, the values that gets returned from the init key function. So to uh, shut down the whole system, we use the IG hold. And once you run it, halting will be uh, in the reverse order of initializing. So that's the basic of integrant. This ABC system is very close to what we need, but we need to do a better job at naming. For example, uh, instead of A, we should have named it the jetty. Instead of B, we should have named it handler. Uh, this should be our SQLite database. Let's remove all, all of these printing things. Also, let's give, give them a more descriptive description. 
and we don't always need to provide the uh, the whole key uh, multi method. So let's go back and refactor our handler. Basically, we don't no longer need uh, the this star function anymore. The, instead, this will be a the lifecycle method. Here we just provide the handler, and another thing is that this whole thing can actually become uh, additional configurations. For example, we can put the port away. We just provide another port key, 3000. To stop the jelly server, we call the stop function on the jelly object. So coming back here, in instead of just the, the app, we can uh, make it a function. So what we need is uh, we need to inject the database and then uh, so let's refactor this and then coming back so we call the handler to create app and then provide db have a uh, start function actually this is this will become the the main function so we can go go to our browser again and everything is working fine now we can now safely shut down our system we can uh, implement our reloaded workflow now um, so let's first create a dev folder. Require the integrand REPL. Require the our common system. We need to do uh, one more thing to set it up. Uh, what we need is simply just get the grab the system configuration and. Uh, put that into a function. Once that's set up, you can define your own uh, utilitary function. Once that's done, uh, you can try things like uh, go and you can try things like uh, hold and just call it reset or reset all. Coming back and it's running and let's run the hold and reset again. So with a reloaded workflow in place, we can try things like, for example, we want to change things like uh, the body. Um, we reevaluate this and we're trying to call it, but because the original reference to the handler uh, is still the same one. Uh, what we did was create a new instance of our function, but we are not binding that updated function to the uh, to the handler. So what we can do is we go to uh, yeah. One one thing you can do is you instead of binding the actual uh, reference at the uh, at the compile time, you can bind the the var of okay here or need to save it and then to reset it now you get the right response let's uh, do another um try another uh, example we want to inject our database connection into all of our handler since uh, most of our handlers are going to use the database one way to do it is the, we can bind it to arguments Another way is we can inject our database into the request map. Uh, we can start by creating a new namespace. Let's call it middleware. The middleware inside threaded is just pure data. So you define the middleware. Let's call it the database middleware. Let's call it uh, DB. We define a compile keyword, which will be called uh, during the compile time. This compile key is a function that takes two arguments uh, and the first one is the route data and the second one is the route options. 
we can either inject our database into uh, through the routing data or through the routing options. Let's uh, just stick with the, this one. And let's uh, also the construct this one into the, just the database. This will return a middleware function. And middleware is just a higher order function that takes the any handler and returns a different handler, something like that. Uh, we need to shuffle in the, the database into the request map. We can just associate the database into our request. Sorry. So that means before the handler actually gets the request, the request map will get associated with the database first. Back to the handler, middleware of NW. Here, we usually want to stick our handler as the, the last one in the middleware chain so that our middleware will be the last one to be invoked when the request comes in and then uh, our middleware will be the first one to, uh, to return the response in the middleware chain. We said that the middleware gets the route, route, uh, route data uh, through the DB key. We can start doing things like, uh, and we can say keys DB, for now DB is DB. So save everything and we reset. Coming back, we make a request. We can tell from the console DB is nil. Let's try, let's say our uh, SQLi, oh here, actually here. No DB true. Reset it. Try again. Now our DB becomes this. Last thing is uh, we can, uh, since we have the main function now, we can provide a new alias server, a main option of common the system. Take care of the typos. So what we've learned today is we use uh, Integran to split our system into three different parts. We have the Jetty server, we have the handler part, and we have the SQLite part. And then we learned to use the Integran repo to create a reloaded workflow for us. And the last thing is we do a little bit uh, with the middleware to inject the database reference into every handlers in our router. So the next time we are going to actually use the database and then to uh, to put data uh, into our database and to uh, retrieve it uh, using hug SQL. And see you next time. Thank you for watching.